Hi, my name is Deanna Mang, and today I will be discussing the educational giant Noah Webster. Noah Webster was born October 16, 1758, and grew up in a farming community in West Hartford, Connecticut. His father, Noah Sr., was primarily a farmer. However, he established a local book society in their community. His mother, Mercy, taught Noah and his siblings to read and write and to appreciate music. At age six, he attended a local school that had been built by the community church. Here, the instruction was mainly of a religious nature. He did not have a positive experience in primary school, and this fueled his drive to improve the education system. At age 14, Noah was tutored by his pastor, learning both Latin and Greek in preparation to attend Yale. At age 16, he was accepted and attended from the year 1774, graduating in 1778. During this time, his education was interrupted briefly by the American Revolution, where he served in his community militia with his father. After graduating, Noah taught school back in Connecticut for a while. He then began to study for the bar, was accepted to law school, and earned a master degree by 1781. Because of the ongoing war, Noah could not find employment as a lawyer and taught school in Goshen, New York. During this time, he made note of the conditions of schools, of their textbooks, and of the literature. Most textbooks were from Britain, teaching Britain value, British values and history. Considering himself to be a patriot, Noah felt that there was a great need for American textbooks with American values. He said he had, quote, too much pride to stand indebted to Great Britain for books to learn our children. Thus began his lifelong quest for an American education. Noah wrote a series of books dedicated to edu educating American children. The series was called A Grammatical Institute of the English Language, with the first book being called The American Spelling Book, which sold for a penny a book. He printed 5,000 co copies and they sold out very quickly, and in 1804 he sold over a million of the revised speller. This book, most known as the Blue Back Speller, is still in print today and has sold over 100 million copies. The other two books in this series were a grammar book written in 1784 followed by a reader for children who could already read, and that one was printed in 1784. Five. Noah Webster felt that the new American, the new America could be united through written and spoken language. His hope was that these textbooks would educate children in a uniform fashion. Noah Webster played a huge role in the copyright laws. After writing his book, he toured the country to promote his works and to register them for each, from each state to gain a copyright protection. There was no national copy, copyright laws at that time, and Noah was instrumental in persuading Congress to pass a law to protect the writer's rights. Noah married his wife in 1789 and began to practice law in Hartford, Connecticut for a period of four years, but then he returned to New York and concentrated on writing more textbooks. This is where he became fam famous in most eyes. It is at this Point, he embarks on the task of language reform. Noah stated this fact, quote, There is no alternative. Every possible reason that could ever be offered for altering the spelling of words still exists in full force. And if a gradual reform should not be made in our language, it will prove that we are less under the influence of reason than our ancestors. He began this reform with a book called A Philosophical and Practical Grammar of the English Language, which he wrote in the year 1807. His main focus, however, was on creating a dictionary of the American English language. It started with his first version, called A Compendious Dictionary of the English Language, written in 1806. After an abridgment and a revision that comprised of two volumes, he created the second edition in 1841, which we know as Webster's Unabridged Dictionary. 
Noah Webster made many contributions to education. He simplified the American written language and created uniform spelling books. He changed words from the British form to an American form and brought about conformity. He wrote the speller on the assumption that they were to teach children to read and then to spell. His method included sounding out words using the alphabet and at that point pronouncing the words as they were written. This use of early phonics is the foundation for reading today. He believes that once a word could be pronounced, then the comprehension would soon follow. He also perfected the pronunciation of written words through syllabification. His many textbooks introduced other subjects that are now being taught in our schools today, such as geography and history. Many authors have improved upon the concepts set by Noah Webster but he gave a foundation on which others could build. As a nationalist, his three-part series, The Speller, The Grammar, and The Reader, included his political and patriotic view views, as well as the values he deemed American. These included the value of work and money, property rights, honesty, and thrift. He supported correct behavior in the classroom and was an advocate for the education of women. As educators, many of the principles and practices that Noah Webster designed continue to guide us as we teach and model for our students. While helping children master phonics and how to break words into syllables, we can hear the echoes of the past. Because of his unification of the English language, schools around the country teach the same dialect and spelling. His ingenuity in creating a dictionary of the English language has enriched our lives and is a true benefit to all. As students and educators, we can rely on the revised dictionary to guide us in our spelling, correct pronunciation, and meaning of the words in our English language. This schoolmaster of the Republic, as Webster has been viewed, has contributed much to our American education system.